Hello everybody and welcome back. I'm happy that you're here. So today I want to talk about something really interesting. It's a hidden feature in Microsoft Office 365. I guess it's about to be released. I'm not sure exactly when, but it's called Microsoft Lists. Now it may not be available for everyone, but I do want to show you how to get into it and talk a little bit about some of the functionality that's there right now and maybe talk a little bit about what we might be able to do with this in the future. I'm pretty excited about it. I know I'm excited about lists, but it is a cool feature when you start thinking about it. You'll see. Let's go have a look right now. To get to lists, what I need to do first is log into my Office account. And once I've logged into my Office account, I'm going to click on OneDrive. Now this is a new feature, so you'll see I have my OneDrive here. I'm going to go into the URL, the, the address bar up here, and where it says OneDrive, I'm just going to take that out and I'm going to type in the word lists. And this is going to take me to the list. Now you may not have this in your environment. It's going to depend on whether your tenant or your Office 365 account is enrolled in beta features or new features. There, um, there are some cases where you may not have this. In my case, I do. This is my own personal Office One, uh, Office 365 account. So when I go in and replace the word OneDrive with lists, I get this lists landing page. You can see recent lists that I've worked on. I can drop that down and see that. I'll go ahead and create a new list. And when I create a new list, I can pull in maybe a list from Excel, from an Excel spreadsheet. I can use an existing list if I've already got lists in play. There are a number of templates that are provided initially here. There's an issue tracker, an employee onboarding, an event itinerary. Let's go ahead and do, let's open up a template just so that we can see. And you can see that within the event, we can have all of the different things that are going to be happening during this event. You can see that we have a column for session name, a session code, the type of session, and a description of the session, and all the way across the speaker's date, time. And each of these represents a different type of data field. Let's go ahead and cancel this and build one from scratch. So I'll go ahead and say new list. I'll create a blank list. And in this one here, I'll call it demo for cool people that hit the like button. So if you haven't done that already, this is a video for you. So go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Yeah, well, that was a pretty clever way of putting that in the video, I thought. Okay, I'll just call this demo. And I'm going to make it, of course, mainframe green. And we'll go ahead and create this list. Well, if I scroll down, I can also choose an icon for it. So let's go ahead and we'll make the icon. It's an experiment. So we'll make it a little, uh, little flask in there and we can save it. We can put it into uh, different types of uh, SharePoint sites. So you can see I've got some SharePoint sites that I've been playing around with. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it into my lists and we're going to create that list. So now You'll see that list is created and it's, it's not too darn excited. There's the title, there's columns in here. So if I go into title, you can see that I can do some sorting from A to Z and Z to A, or if you're down in the States, A to Z and Z to A. Uh, you can filter by different fields. You can set column settings. You could do totals in here like counts. If I add a column, this is where I get all of the different data types that I can put into a, a list. So I can put a location. I'm excited about that. That uh, has some possibilities where if I can put a location field in there, I'll just pop that in there. So underneath the location field, I can link it to, for example, a postal code or I could put it to a street address. Uh, this is going to be very exciting once we have the mobile functionality here because I might be able to set up automation so that when I'm in a certain address range uh, that what I'm going to be able to do is trigger an action. So for example, when I you know, say, okay, I need some of these things from the hardware store the next time I'm there and I need these things from the grocery store, when I'm close to that address, it'll actually trigger it and I'll get a reminder on my phone saying, hey, you know, you need to pick up these five items from the grocery store. That's a little more advanced. Obviously, I'm not going to build that right now in this initial demo. Um, I'm going to definitely play with that, though. You can put in hyperlinks. So if you're doing web research, uh, you can put numbers. Yes, no. Let's do a yes, no. So we'll put a yes, no in here. And I'll say uh, vanilla and uh, ice cream. So we can have, do you want vanilla ice cream? And we can say here, do you want this flavor? 
I'll spell it the English way, and we'll make it a yes, no, and the default value is until they tell us they want ice cream, they don't get ice cream. We can even go into more options in here, so you can scroll down and you can require that it has information. So basically, it's a, it's a database, so you're doing a non-nullable field in here, and you can add it to all content types. So I'll just go ahead and save it as is, and you can see I now have a vanilla ice cream column in here, and I could go in here and I could put in a picture, and I could actually import a picture or have the option to import a picture. I'll cancel that for now. I could go in and underneath the more here, you can see that there's going to be other data types that we can put in here. So you can see there's different data types in here. It's going to be really powerful as we start combining this with tools such as Power BI, um, where we go in, we can do calculated columns in here. I can, um, you know, lots of uh, formatting options that I have in here. So we go in here. I don't want to get too, too complex on this uh, view with our initial view here. So if I go in here underneath, so now I've got a very boring, well, it's not boring, it's vanilla ice cream. What could be boring about vanilla ice cream? So if I go in here and I'll say new, now I'm going to put in a new value in here and I'm going to go Frank's choice. Now it just so happens that I like vanilla ice cream. It's the finest of the flavors for any uh, Bare Naked Lady fans out there. That's a band here in Canada. Uh, they're actually world famous, but there is, yeah, it doesn't matter. So I could put an attachment there, maybe a smiling face of me wanting the ice cream. I'll save this and you'll notice that's now in there and somebody else comes along and it's going to be Bob's. Oh, I always spell Bob's name backward. Uh, Bob's choice. So put Bob's choice in there. Hey, Bob doesn't want vanilla ice cream. So you can see I'm starting to build up a list. So I could have a list, for example, we'll use the groceries. It's easy. I have a list of all my standard uh, staple groceries that I like to have. And I could have, uh, you know, whether I have them in stock or not. And then if I go on here, I can actually edit it. And I can say, oh, I have gotten my vanilla ice. I don't need any anymore. So no, no need for Frank to get vanilla ice cream. But Bob, on the other hand, He's going to go in here. He's going to get the vanilla ice cream. And I could share that. So I can share that with team members. So if this was a task list, I could share those tasks with people. Uh, some neat things that you can do here is you can also automate. So you can actually work with uh, sign off requests or a power automate where you can actually create a flow so that if something happens, for example, maybe you have an automation that collects all of the people that responded yes to vanilla ice cream. So you know that you need, you know, in a large, uh, let's say you have 50 people coming to an event, you have a list of every attendee for that event. Then what you can do is you could say, I need 50 people coming. I need 40 vanilla ice creams, 10 chocolate ice creams, whatever the case may be. I have no idea. It's hot out today. So I think that's why I'm thinking about ice cream. Anyway, so we can go in, you can create workflows, you can put compliance on there. So there's a lot of really cool things that sort of foreshadow what we're going to be able to do with lists in the future. Up top here, you can also go into automating them. So Power Automate, create the workflows. And we can, of course, create and reuse workflows. You can work with the Power App. So you can create a Power App to work with these lists as well. Uh, those are more advanced, but we can go into just a simple ex export out to Excel. We can share, obviously, do quick quick edit on here. If you go in here, you can go and see where that's where I can go in and just modify a whole bunch of choices at once right? Everybody wants vanilla, right? So you can do a quick edit in there as well. Uh, other things that you can do on the ellipse here is you can set up alerts and manage alerts on there. So if the choice changes, you could have an alert fire off. You can add new items here as well. So that's a nice little quick edit. If I go back up to lists here, so go back up to lists, you can now see the demo for cool people who hit the like button is right there. And if I go in, I can also go into all of the lists that I have. And you can see that there's a few in here, such as a social list and a micro feed. So if I go into my social list here, open that up, you can see documents that I'm following. Um, this particular um, SharePoint site that I'm on, but Office 365 site that I'm on, I'm an old guy, so I sometimes refer to it as SharePoint. Uh, Office 360. There's a uh, that's a that's another video altogether. But in this one here, uh, you can see documents that I'm following. I don't use this very much, other than for demo purposes. That's why you'll see funny things in there. Uh, if I go in here again, go back to my lists here. Uh, there's a micro feed of things I'm subscribed to. You can see I did a YouTube demo before I I I did that here. Uh, for you on, in this video. So there's a number of different uh, ways that I can work with lists and create new lists. This is an exciting feature. It's uh, it's in 
beta, I guess. I'm not sure. A limited preview. There's uh, there's some some mechanism or some methodology that they're using to get people to, to take a look at this. And uh, I thought I would share this with you very early, something that you could start playing with. And this is going to be something that I think I'll end up doing more videos on, um, especially around uh, as the project product matures and we start seeing the ability to use it in a mobile environment because it'll be synced across all of your Office 365 um instances so if you're logged in on your phone and your ipad or your android tablet or whatever you're logged in as um it'll it'll synchronize right because it's office 365 it's in the cloud so we're going to be able to use this across multiple devices and we're going to be able to automate it through some pretty powerful tools that are sit on the server that sit up in office 365 so for example if i make an update to a list that's shared with a group and I do that on my mobile phone, that group could receive an alert saying, hey, you know, Frank just updated the list. Uh, this is gonna make, uh, you know, some exciting things happen. I'm already thinking from an educational standpoint that it'd be really neat to use uh, in conjunction with lists uh, and alerts and such is have the students create a scavenger hunt. So they can go out with their mobile devices and they can collect five or six items for, you know, on a scavenger hunt type basis. And then how fast can they update that to the central office, letting them know who is the first group to achieve uh, the collection of those items. Uh, that will really be good because that'll teach them how to use lists, how to use Power Automate, how to set up alerts, a lot of good, uh, good opportunities for learning there. Anyways, pretty exciting. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, just a very quick demonstration of lists, and we're going to be seeing more of these as we um, as we see this product released and more uh, functions coming into it. It's also going to be interesting to see if third-party folks will give us templates that we can just bring into our environment and kind of have a pre-built uh, environment for us. Okay, take care. We'll see you in the next video. Once again, thank you for watching. I'm, I'm glad that you're here. Take care. Bye.